Right, Masquerade, one of my favourite books. So it came out in 1979, and it was um, illustrated and made by Kit Williams, and it was a treasure hunt. This was the treasure. It was a golden hair with jewels encrusted into it, so I knew. Um, and it was buried somewhere in England, and the challenge was to find, well, find where it was buried and dig it up. And this book contains all the clues that you needed. Sorry. Go. Yeah. Um, and on the surface level, it's uh, just a, a children's story about um, a hare which falls in love with the moon. But the whole way through it has this kind of Wicker Man-esque pagan feel to it. Um, and it, it's all done in a, in a weird perspective as well. So Kit Williams had a, a slightly wonky eye. He had impaired vision. And he viewed the world in this kind of, um, I don't know, weird perspective. And he, he always drew like that, so all of his paintings, not just for this book, but all of, uh, all of them, um, had this kind of, I don't know, like you're looking through it through glass uh, that has been warped slightly. Um, and in it there are a whole lot of things, so like over here you've got a little magic square, and so there's lots of classic puzzle things there. Um, just to point some of the things out, uh, are the words around the edge of each picture, you look at this one, there are four red letters, so um, H, A, R, and E, spells that here. There are also some of them that have slight barbs to them, so for example this D has barbs on it, and all the ones on this page make the word golden, so we have golden hair. And each page has uh, the barbed letters and the red letters, and they give you a bit of a clue. And there are a lot of clues going on here, um, so th there's a lot to do with uh, time and um, astronomy things. I, I, I won't point out the actual solution to this, but I don't want to spoil it for anyone. Um, but the, the whole thing is quite intricate. And it went on for a couple of years, so in the, the papers were all over it, they were really excited um, to whenever anyone had a proposed solution to it. I read, I'm listening to the audiobook of Ready Player One at the moment and it reminded me of this. Um, and it, this was the first, but there are a whole lot of uh, armchair treasure hunts that came from it. Um, the actual thing was solved uh, three years later, so 1982, and um, there's a bit of controversy about uh, the person that, that solved it. So what, he sent in his name, it's a red herring, a literal one. He sent in his name under a pseudonym because uh, it was the new boyfriend of Kit Williams' uh, ex-girlfriend. And um, she claims that she didn't even know the um, location of the hair. But, I don't know, Kit Williams wasn't very happy when he found out. He said it tarnished the reputation of Masquerade. Um, it uh, the golden hair itself it has been sold a couple of times. So in 1988, it was um, sold in an auction at Sotheby's for just over 31,000, um, and it, it went to an anonymous person. But it's it's now gone. It, it's been displayed at the V&A and that kind of thing. Um, so it, it's back in public domain. Kit Williams himself, um, he, he didn't just do um, paintings and books. He had one other book, which was called um, The Bee Book. Um, well, it's known as The Bee Book. Its actual title, uh, that's the puzzle that you have to work out. So uh, it contains clues within it as to what the title might be. It's got a picture of a bee on the front, so people locally know it, know it as The Bee Book. Um, there's, some, there's a maze in um, Gloucestershire somewhere. I, I'll put a link under the video uh, to it. But in the maze, there are a whole lot of clues along the way. And so when you get to the centre, you have to have solved the clues, and um, there's a, a little surprise there. It's delightful. Um, it also designed clocks. I, you can see why I like this person. Um, the, the famous one is in Cheltenham Shopping Centre, and it, it, has, um, it blows bubbles every half an hour, and it has lots of uh, little mice, um, and a, a goose that lays a golden egg every so often, and things. Um, I, I think there are two of it clocks that he made. I know one's in Telford Shopping Centre, and I can't remember the other one. He came, he, oh wait no, the other one's uh, Milton Keynes. He lived in Gloucestershire, um, so most of his things are around there. But, that's pretty much it.
That's great.